just got to the lake, it's just going dark, it's the middle of October and it's that time of the year when the weather's all over the place. But I'm at a new venue, I'm at the Stunning Boathouse Fisheries in Shropshire, which is a newly opened day ticket water. We'll have a good look around tomorrow because the light levels are really fading. I've only just got here about half an hour or so ago and I literally just pulled into the car park, walked into the first swim and saw a fish lob itself out in the middle. So that's all I've done is walk to this swim with my gear, got the rods quickly set up, there they are down there and I put stringers on all three rods and just lobbed them into the general area of where the fish showed. So, uh, yeah, I'm not too confident if I'm honest because I prefer to turn up to a water and have a good look round and see if I can see fish feeding, etc. and see what's available. But um, I'm the only one here, so that's definitely a bonus. And it definitely looks an absolutely stunning venue. It's set right in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the Shropshire countryside, where, believe it or not, there is actually an internet signal, which is a proper bonus out here because normally you don't get any signal at all in Shropshire. But... Um, yeah, it's nice to be here. It looks like the heavens are going to open this evening, but I've got 48 hours available to me, so hopefully we're going to get a chance or two with these carp. They haven't been really fished for over the last few months because it's not yet open to the public, but um, I know there's some absolutely gorgeous carp in here, so hopefully during the course of this film we'll get a chance or two to see one or two. Morning, and uh, yeah, not a great deal to report last night other than an absolutely awesome sleep. It's so quiet and picturesque down here that uh, you could hear a pin drop. There's owls in the trees behind me as well, so very, very nice setting, but uh, as predicted really last night, I didn't get anything at all. I did hear some fish showing in the night out here, but you know, I, I'm, on, I'm being honest now, I literally just chucked the rods out, didn't really do anything with them, so um, I've redone them now, and what I'll do is just talk you through quickly where I've put these rods. There aren't many features out in front of me, so the fishing isn't that technical. The left-hand rod, I'm fishing roughly towards the boathouse, about 40, 50 yards range. It's around about six foot in depth there. There's a little bit of weed dotted about, and all I've done is spotted a little bit of pellet and sweet corn out there, and fished a PB pop-up over the top. The middle rod, that's roughly towards the second swim on the right of the boathouse. Again, 40, 50 yards, it's a little bit deeper there. It goes down to six and a half, seven foot. And I've just again put some corn and some pellet and, and a PB pop up over the top of that as well. Nice and visual. And then the right hand rod, that's down towards the sluice on the right hand side here. That is the deepest area of the lake. It goes down to nine foot in there. And I did see a fish showing that area about half an hour or so ago. And with that one, all I've done is walk down to the margin to the right and put a bit of corn and um, some pellets over the top of that as well. Again, with a PB pop up on that. So it's nice and visual. I'm fishing for one bite at a time and it certainly looks a lot more favorable today to get a carp. I think today must rank as one of the most miserable days I've ever done any filming because it's terrible, it's so grey and miserable. There's really fine misty rain in the air. There's a layer of mist in the distance because normally you can see some hills in the background apparently but at the moment you just can't see them and um, the air is so damp. I've actually got the camera just on the edge of the bivvy door at the moment because um, I don't want it to get wet and it's given me the best light conditions that uh, the camera will give me. It's very difficult to film in these conditions so I do apologise if uh, it's not coming through very well. But yeah, we're on two o'clock in the afternoon now and I've been here since quarter to six yesterday and I've not caught anything, which, yeah, I'm a little bit surprised if I'm honest because the lake, although it has been getting fished, they're not overly pressured carp at the moment. So they're not been getting a, a bombarding from anglers lines and bait, etc. And you know, they're very naive fish. So it might be coming as a bit of a surprise to you that I haven't caught anything just yet, but I have fished this kind of lake before when the fish aren't really attuned to anglers baits and anglers and sometimes they can be quite difficult to catch, that's just the way it is and I think it's more to do with the environment and the conditions at the moment because there's been a lot of rain in the, the region over the last 24-48 hours and at that time of the year when the water temperature does start to change, you know, you get them summery days and then them really cold nights, you know, last night was very very cold and although the fish are active at the moment um, I've been seeing quite a few of them topping out in the middle and out to me right as well down towards the sluice 
I do think that we're just waiting for something to click more than it's actually something that I'm doing wrong. You know, I'm fishing very simple. I'm using pellets, sweet corn, with a little bit of boilie out there, and I'm the only one on the lake as well. So, um, you know, I'm dropping these these rods right on the fish, and I've not yet caught anything. So, uh, I don't think it's down to what I'm doing. It's more to do with the conditions and. You know, people might find that surprising because they are very naive fish, but um, trust me, it's happened to me quite a few times in my career when I fish these kind of waters, when they're not yet open, they're not overly fished for, but they are quite tricky to catch. But um, I've got 24 hours left now, so I'm still very optimistic that something will happen and this rain is due to change in the next few hours and hopefully we might get a little bit of sunshine and then we can uh, actually put a fish or two on the bank, but yeah. It's, uh, it's not going well at the moment, but I do think it will change. I mean, with Alex then, who's now had the fishery for about 18 months or so, ain't you, mate? Yeah, I mean, uh, John and Louise took over the lease last year, um, so we've we've basically come in, we've um, assessed the situation, and we've basically just cracked on and done an absolute ton of work um, to make it as, as good as you can see today. You know, including, you know, obviously pegs. Um, we've desilted the lake. We've removed tons and tons of silt, and we've, it's just been a tireless, hard summer that we've. Um, you know, we're sort of left with this beautiful scenery, really. Yeah, was there any original carp in it when you took over, mate? Yeah, I mean, um, it, it, a guy had had it previously for about 15 years. It had about carp in for 10 years, as, as I'd say. Yeah. Um, and we basically purchased the fish off him. So we looked, we had about 95 fish off him. Yeah. And then what we've done is introduced a few new stockies uh, and basically looking for the future. Yeah. You know, uh, sort of our own sort of unique fish. You know, it's a beautiful English estate lake, which has yep. been here for over a hundred years. So, we want to keep that, you know, that theme, that beautiful estate sort of scenario, really. Yep. Uh, so, what we've done is we've picked some lovely scaly fish, some yep. beautiful, young, growing, nice scaly fish, really. Yep. You know, and so they are growing, aren't they? Because there's been oh. carp caught to over thirty pounds that you put in here that were what twenty low twenties. Yeah, I mean, we've we've had uh, you know they've exceeded our expectations, really. Um, yep. We've we've had fish from like. 29 pound which we put in at 24 pounds wow, so yeah. they've you know we've fed them well you did 100 fish 20 yeah so i mean by the time we open at the moment we've got a few stockies which we will be taking out we've yeah. got 24 stock ponds around the site so we're, we're blessed with loads of water yeah. um, and what we want to do is when anglers come you know it's not going to be a runs runs lake it's going to be tricky with big fish yeah. you know but we're looking by the time we open about 10 30s yeah and probably in excess of 70 20 pounders really wow, and a fantastic. few you know what we'll have is a few 16 to 20 pound mark which will be our our young fish that we've been growing on yeah you know they're nice scaly looking ones that, you know the the water's crystal clear so they go black yeah. as anything you, you know and it's just a nice weedy joy to fish lake really yeah yeah so what we've got six swims six swims in total yeah. uh, one double swim yeah uh, and the other four two on the yew tree side two on a dam side yeah. um, these can all be booked online yeah we we are going uh, we're going to book, book a peg basically yeah. they're going to run on 48 hour tickets like Monday to Wednesday Wednesday first Friday yeah. Got you. Friday to Sunday and we're going to book your peg um, and the reason you know it's not everyone's cup of tea and I know fish can you know they might be all in that swim or but, the fish get around this lake all the time. Yeah, it's you know? not massive, so is it? It's so not massive. Gonna... It's just uh, just under five acres. Yeah. You know, and it just means that you can get here in your own leisure. You're not queuing up at the queue. You know, like yeah. to get here first thing in the morning. You yeah. know, you're you're coming here. In you know, you've got a nice peg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you've got a nice yeah. peg. You know, and every peg. Uh, you know, you'd be happy fishing every peg. Yeah. You know, each peg's unique. Yeah. It's got their own little features, whether that be the margin, little features in the lake that we've put in, deeper yeah. areas, shallow areas, weedy areas. It's, it's, yeah, it's, got it's it a all. lovely place, mate. It really is. I've had a, a lovely trip down here. It's very, very quiet, very picturesque, very scenic, and lovely fishing here. So I'm sure you're going to be inundated with people wanting to come and fish here. Well, that's, that's the plan. I mean, yeah, the, the amount of work that's gone into it, you, you know, it's been a remarkable summer. It's yeah. nearly broke us a few times, but uh, yeah, no, it's looking. <laughs> it's looking um, 
looking looks good for the future. You know? Yeah, Signs brilliant, mate. That's fantastic. So they can book online. Yep. Website will be up and running very soon. Yep. And you've got an active Facebook page where people can keep yes. up to date with things as well. Yeah, yeah and Instagram, Instagram as well. And yeah. you know, there's lots of exciting things. Not only like with all the stock ponds that we've got with fish growing on. You know, yeah. we're looking at getting a pod on the double swim. You know, if that's brilliant. viable, which will just make you know take it to another level. Yeah. You know, and in the years to come, you know, the fish will get bigger. Awesome. They're well looked after. We, you know, we could drain the lake. We could look after. We're very selective. You yeah. know, I mean, last week we did take out two twenty pounders. Wow. You know, so we are religiously picking the best of the best. You know, yeah. and and that means if you know you come and you catch one fish, you know you've got an absolute stunning fish. You're going home happy, really. Super, brilliant stuff. There's my first one. Off the mark with a cracking little fully scaled. Proper chuffed because it's taken me over 24 hours to get my first bite. But that's carp fishing at this time of the year. Let's take a look at it on the bank anyway. Let's see if I can hold him. Well, I'm off the mark with this little baby and it's an absolute stunner. And uh, I'm going to keep hold of this one because I think. Alex will want to probably take this one out and stick it in the stock ponds, but uh, it's good to get me first carp. And after 24 hours, obviously, that's a little bit of a relief, but uh, I'm sure we're going to get another one or two because the conditions today are a lot better than they were yesterday. I know a lot of people like to know about the rigs being used in these films, so I'll talk you through what I've got on today. And without wanting to sound like a broken record, it's very similar to what I use in all my other blogs. Wherever I go fishing, I tend to use the same sort of rigs. But today, the one noticeable difference is I've really fined everything down. Normally in England, I'll be using a 25 pound hook link or above, or a size six hook or bigger. But today, I've gone in with a 15 pound link. That's the Avid Captive Coated Hook Link. And I've taken all of the outer coating off, so we're left with this nice supple braid. I've got a size eight hook on there. I've got a knotless knot, and then one of the little kickers. And then as a hook bait, I'm either using one of these wafters, which are PB wafters from DNA, or I'm using a pop-up, which I've just trimmed to make it critically balanced. Just got a standard lead clip on there. Gone in with a four ounce lead, purely because I like nice and heavy leads. And we've got 15 pound main line straight through to the reel. So very simple, but it's effective and it works wherever I go. I get a lot of people asking me about tangles with this rig. Now, of course it happens when you drill a cast in, but if you use the clip on the reel or feather the cast, the rig will always kick out and sit perfectly. Other ways to avoid them is by using a stringer or a solid bag, or if the venue allows a bait boat. Now, I always feel for a nice drop when I cast out, and as I say, I've used this rig for years, and it wouldn't catch fish as well as it does if tangles are such a big issue. This month's product plug is the Avid Carp Storm Shield Net and Sling Bag. Now everyone hates the smell of wet nets and slings, so this product is the ideal way of keeping your wet items locked away until you get home. The bag features a roll top design, security buckle and heat welded seams, which eliminates water and smell escaping during transportation. It's completely waterproof, so you get no drip whatsoever in the car, so long as you've sealed it okay. It'll accommodate either landing net heads or retention slings, and you can pick them up off the net for as little as 20 quid if you shop around. More info on this brilliant product, check them out at avidcarp.com. I'm not going to lie to you, the first 24 hours of this trip was proper art going on. I think the main reason for that was down to the weather conditions because at this time of the year, it doesn't matter where you go, the fishing can always be a bit hit and miss. One minute the rain was here, then, then it was sunshine, and then it was windy, it was coming from the north, then the south, the carp were in front of me one minute, then they were over the other side. And you know, it's typical of autumn fishing really when it's transitioning into that winter period because all it needs is for that water temperature to change by a degree or two. 
and the carp start reacting a lot differently to what they were doing a couple of days before. But um, I've stuck with a simple approach on waters like this where the carp haven't seen a great deal of pressure. You don't need to use the most sophisticated rigs or fancy baits. It's all about keeping things simple and that pellet and sweet corn approach with the simple rigs has worked out okay for me in the end. And it doesn't surprise me really either that all of my bites have come in a, a pretty short period because at this time of the year your, your fishing can be very different to what it's like in the summer months. The carp start grouping up, they're very picky about where they're uh, picking baits up from and all three of my bites have come from pretty much the same area so uh, you know we'll take a look at the biggest fish in a minute which um, I've just got down there in the sling but I uh, just wanted to say that as a venue this has been absolutely lovely being down here. It's a beautiful setting, it's a wonderful fishery and it's got a fantastic future so uh, it gets a massive thumbs up from me and it's a great addition for the day ticket carping scene so uh, good luck to Alex and John in the future. Let's take a look at this fish now, it's an absolute stunner and it's a great way to end this session. Well, I tell you what, that's not a bad fish at all, that isn't. I bet you that is close to 30 pounds, definitely upper 20. It's got a right set of shoulders on it. Well, what a great way to end. Biggest fish of the session at 28 pounds. A stunning carp in stunning scenery. And this is one really, really nice day to get laid. And I'm sure it's gonna make a lot of people happy.